Dave Smith here. So this video is going to be the third in my uh, short series on weight loss. I've set a timer on my iPad here, which I actually I think is a, probably out of shot. Um, and I've done that because this camera doesn't automatically start a new clip when it gets to its time limit that these things often have. And I think this might be a slightly longer video. Anyway, we'll see how we get on. So this video is about diet and I want to emphasize right from the start that it's diet as opposed to dieting. Um, before ever I got into all this, I'd already decided that my uh, eating needed to change for a variety of reasons. <coughs> Excuse me. I'd spent a couple of decades traveling uh, all over the world and uh, that had led to some pretty awful eating habits. And uh, in addition to that, uh, I decided when I settled back in the UK uh, and bought this house, I decided that uh, I was going to become vegetarian again. <coughs> and my reasoning for that is, uh, frankly, I don't trust the, uh, the, um, the food chain. I think big agribusiness has poisoned our food chain and that is uh, most sharply defined in uh, meat and fish. Uh, I saw a documentary not too long ago about Norwegian farmed salmon being the most toxic food in the world, for example. Uh, and there are many, many examples across the whole animal husbandry uh, industry, in my view. So I've decided to not eat meat. So let's talk a little bit about this uh, distinction between diet and dieting. I think when many people find themselves uh, overweight, the decision is that, oh, I'll go on a diet. For some period of time, <coughs> I'll change what I'm eating to reduce the calorie intake to get my weight down and then that'll be fine. But then of course they carry on uh, as normal and the weight goes back on. Uh, so if uh, I, th I think if what you're interested in is sustainable weight loss, you have to address your diet from the ground up. And that's really what I was uh, intending to do. My first, my first decision, as I said, was to become vegetarian. My second was to cut out uh, processed carbohydrates uh, and actually met most carbohydrates. So I immediately stopped eating uh, rice, pasta, uh, potatoes and uh, bread. Stop them completely, uh, immediately. Now, I know what you're thinking, right? If you, if like me, you're from <coughs> uh, the Western world, and, and indeed, I think most cultures have uh, have what is essentially a carbohydrate-based diet. You have rice in Asia, you have potatoes in Europe, and and so on. Um, and you can't really imagine how you can survive if you're not eating those, uh, those things. Well, let me tell you, you can, all right? And I'm gonna come on a little bit to that, uh, a little bit more detail uh, to that in a moment. Um, but you really can. So that was, that was my first uh, step. My second step was to, um, was to fix the calories. Now, I'm not really interested in uh, a calorie controlled diet. I, I don't want to be counting calories forevermore. So what I wanted to do was to get some sense of what the calorific intake was. <coughs> because, f you know, frankly, it, despite what um, the PC-ness of various people uh, w want, want to tell you, yes, everybody's body is different and everybody responds differently, but only within uh, parameters. The plain fact of the matter is that if your calorific intake is greater than your calorific output, uh, you're going to put weight on and vice versa. Now, I accept it's not as simple as that and there are all kinds of um, biomechanical um, processes that make it more complex than that, but essentially that's what we're about. But I didn't want to be counting calories forevermore. So what I wanted to do was to get a sense of where the calorific intake was, what, uh, what was I uh, eating, uh, and sort of fine-tuning that and fine-tuning it. 
So I decided to get myself some um, recipes and try these recipes out. Uh, and I did that in a way and from sources that would tell me what the, uh, what the nutritional information for these recipes is. I started off by um, lentil based recipes, uh, mostly because I, I always feel good when I've eaten lentils. Uh, but I soon stopped that because I decided that lentils were also too high in carbohydrates. So uh, I stopped eating the, uh, the lentils. Now essentially what you, what you want to do is to replace your carbohydrates with protein. Now uh, protein is, uh, is an excellent source because it'll give you the calories that you need. It makes you feel full. Uh, and so you don't need to uh, sort of keep snacking. And uh, it also takes more energy uh, for your body to process proteins than it does to process carbohydrates. Consequently, it's better for your metabolism and your weight loss. So, uh, so that's kind of uh, point number one is uh, get rid of the carbohydrates. Um, find some recipes that you're comfortable with. I actually uh, vary my evening meals over two recipes. I'd like to find a third, but I haven't yet. Uh, and I'm going to tell you what those recipes are. Uh, and I've been, and I've, that's more or less what I've been eating for most of a year. I started with, as I said, with uh, lentil-based recipes. I tried a whole range of things. Uh, I was uh, using. Uh, dried fruits and I switched away from them because they're too high in calories and too high in sugar and you're, and you're much better off with uh, fresh fruits. Um, so, these, so these were the tinkerings that I, that I started with and uh, I wanted to uh, get a grip on the calories uh, so that I could be clear about what my calorific intake was. Uh, and I, I talked in the previous video about what my calorific output uh, was in terms of the exercise. Okay, so so I got these two recipes. The to, the next thing I did was uh, I stopped snacking. Now I find, and I'm sure you find, that if snacks are in the house, um, I'll eat them. I'll just pick at them throughout the day, and my word, your calories mount up. So. Uh, Easiest way to uh, avoid snacking is don't buy them. Just, just don't bother. If they're not in, you won't miss them. You'll feel fine, um, and uh, and it will uh, it will mean that you are keeping a grip on the uh, calorific intake uh, throughout your day without without really having to worry too much about uh, counting calories. Once you've set up your recipes and you know what your calorific intake is provided you then stop the snacking, uh, it'll be fine. All right? Your calorific intake will stay under control. You don't need to keep counting calories. So what do I eat? <clears throat> well, uh, I eat porridge for breakfast. Now, porridge is a high carbohydrate, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> uh, substance. And I've toyed with uh, various um, uh, sort of breakfast uh, recipes, but I find them just too much. Uh, I, I, I can't be bothered with preparing stuff for breakfast. I just want something that's quick and easy. And porridge is it. So I have porridge. I put a handful of blueberries on top and I put yogurt on. Now the yogurt, you, know, you have to be really, really careful with yogurt. Um, and, and indeed with any processed food. As soon as you allow the, um, the big supermarkets to get involved with your food preparation, they're going to poison it. They put all kinds of rubbish in. Uh, and sugar is one of them. Now, I, I've never really eaten much sugar as sugar, but I've completely cut that out of my diet. And I'm conscious of uh, the food that I buy and it's sugar content, because sugar really is completely empty calories. It does almost nothing for you nutritionally uh, and get so truly get rid of it. Um, so when I'm buying yogurt, one of the things I was looking for was uh, yogurt with the lowest possible 
um, sugar. And as, uh, as, you know, as soon as you get into these flavored yogurts, the sugar count goes up dramatically. So I use uh, Greek yogurt and it has uh, 4.7 grams of sugar per 100 grams. Now that's probably, uh, probably all natural sugar, lactose uh, in particular. But when you get into these flavored yogurts and you get into yogurts uh, that have a higher sugar content, they'll go up to 15 grams per 100 grams uh, and more, you know, up, up, up well beyond that. Uh, and that's shocking. So I don't, uh, I don't eat those. I eat plain Greek yogurt and I eat it full fat because actually the, uh, the fat is perfectly good for you. Don't listen to all that stuff about cutting the fat, cutting the fat, cutting the fat, because what, you, what you're then replacing it with is carbs and sugars. Don't do it. The fat's perfectly fine. And what you'll find is if you buy the low fat yogurts, they're high sugar yogurts because they replace the fats with sugar because otherwise there's no taste in these things. Um, and you are much, much better off with the fats than you are with the sugars. So I eat, uh, I eat uh, full fat uh, Greek yogurt on my porridge of a morning. Now the other thing to, to bear in mind is uh, portion control. <coughs> size of your portions matter. Now I stayed, when I first came back to the UK from China, I stayed at my sister's until I found this house to buy. And, um, uh, and she, she cooked. Now, I have to tell you, her portions are huge. I could not possibly uh, clean the plate, ever. Uh, you know, and that's to do with, uh, with uh, how she wants to feel as a host. But a lot of people are like that. Get your portion controls under control. And in terms of the porridge, I started making the porridge with half a cup of uh, oats and one cup of um, milk uh, to give me a, a cup and a half of cooked porridge. And uh, I very quickly decided that was too much. So what I use now is a third of a cup of dried oats and uh, two thirds of milk to give me a uh, one cup of finished porridge and that's perfectly fine. Handful of blueberries, couple of dessert spoons of yogurt, good to go. Get your portion controls under control, they will matter. So that's, uh, that's breakfast and I do that every day, I never change. Uh, I enjoy it, it's fine um, and I don't, I don't feel any need for anything different. So, so that's breakfast. Lunch. Now, what I typically do through the week is I will go out to the gym at about 11.30-ish and I'm coming back around one o'clock and that's when I have lunch. Uh, lunch is a fairly uh, simple meal. Uh, I uh, almost always have uh, carrot sticks with hummus and I'll have a, an apple with that and I will typically have a uh, protein bar from the sports nutrition aisle in the supermarket. Um, mostly because, you know, one of the reasons I was overweight is that I have a sweet tooth and it satisfies that and I'll come back to that uh, a little bit later. <clears throat> so that's my lunch. That, the breakfast works out at about 300 calories. That lunch works out at about 400 calories. Uh, so we're at 700. Then for evening meal, which I usually have around half past five, is uh, a curry. And as I say, I vary between two evening meals. So this curry I make is a vegetable curry. It is uh, cauliflower based. So you, know, you basically cut up a cauliflower, uh, fry them off in some olive oil uh, to brown them. Uh, put in a couple of onions and, uh, add, you know, we use onions for everything, don't we? Uh, a couple of onions, and um, then I just uh, throw in a load of vegetables. I put mushrooms in, courgettes, um, broccoli. I th think that might be it. Uh, also, there's a block of halloumi in there, 225 grams cut into cubes. Uh, 
500 grams of passata, uh, 300 mils of water and 300 grams of uh, frozen peas. And that makes a huge batch of curry. Now the recipe that came from said that makes uh, six portions and those portions are uh, about 350 calories. I actually get uh, eight portions out of, uh, out of that batch and I put three or four in the fridge, I put the remainder in the freezer and I'll usually cook two batches at once so I've got food for about a fortnight there. And <clears throat> that works incredibly well. There's, um, there's tikka masala paste in there. Uh, be careful when you're buying that. When you buy those um, ready-made pastes, very often they're very, very high in sugar. But I find the uh, Patak, I think it's Patak's um, tikka masala paste is very, very reasonable for sugar. It's only about four grams per 100 grams of um, paste. So, so that's the one uh, I use. I also throw some chilies in and I throw some black pepper in because I, I, I like the, the spiciness of it. Uh, works tremendously and I eat that on its own. I don't put any carbs with it at all. Uh, and, I, and that's my evening meal. Now I will typically then have um, a chocolate mousse with that. Now the chocolate mousse is made with uh, coconut cream a uh, couple of avocados, cocoa powder, uh, unsweetened cocoa powder and stevia and that all gets blitzed together and it makes a really really tasty um, chocolate mousse and uh, that's about a hundred I get uh, six portions out of that about 150 calories a portion. I put a little bit of yogurt on that, some more blueberries on that uh, and uh, and then I'll have uh, an apple or a pear uh, as well. And my whole evening meal is then around 700 calories, maybe 800. So my total calorific intake for the day is around 1500 calories. I'm going to turn the video off here because the timer is running out and then I'm gonna come back to how to deal with the sweet toothness of the world. So let's see how that works out. <coughs> Okay, so here I am back again. Um, I've restarted the, uh, the video recording. Um, okay, so my calorific intake, around 1500 calories a day, which is, uh, I'm, I find ample. Uh, I really do, it's perfectly good. I might, <coughs> I might eat other little bits during the day. I might have a second protein bar during the day. I might have uh, a couple of dates during the day. It just depends on how I'm feeling, but more or less, that's my, that's my uh, food. That's what I eat. I did mention that I have a second evening meal, so I'm not eating the curry every single day. I eat that vegetable curry two out of three days, and the third day I make uh, omelets with mushrooms, and I chop up three <coughs> chestnut mushrooms, fry them off in some olive oil, I beat up a couple of eggs, two eggs, and uh, make those into an omelette and uh, that replaces the curry in that evening meal and that would be uh, probably fewer calories it's probably 250 calories ish um, and I find that perfectly adequate as well and it just gives me a nice break uh, every few days from the curry but I really enjoy the curry as well. Uh, now that my weight has come down so dramatically it's possible that I will put in uh, one um, lentils meal uh, into the mix but uh, maybe only once a week for example. So what I might do is two days of curry, one day of eggs, uh, two days of curry, one day of eggs and um, uh, um, a lentils meal. I haven't really decided on that yet. So let's talk about sweet tooth. Uh, okay, so I have a sweet tooth, no two ways about it. And I guess if you're uh, uh, significantly overweight, you probably do as well. So how, do you, how are you going to deal with that? Well, the fact of the matter is we have a sweet tooth. So we, ha we, have, to, uh, we have to factor that in. Now the way I've done it is the chocolate mousse and the protein bars. Now buy the protein bars because actually they're made with um, 
uh, sweeteners, natural sweeteners, like uh, stevia, for example, though not stevia. I can't remember what what it actually is made of, um, but it's uh, and it's natural sweeteners, uh, and I feel I feel comfortable with that. Um, and it's very very low in sugar, uh, and that's been one of the keys cut the sugar out of your diet uh, as far as possible particularly cut out added sugar use these uh, sugar replacements if you need to have sugar um, so that's one way that I deal with uh, sweet toothness the other is the chocolate mousse now the chocolate mousse is actually uh, really good uh, it's got a nice hit of chocolate from the cocoa powder it's made with uh, avocados and avocados are, uh, are a very good uh, food substance for you to eat. They're high in protein, they're high in fats, they're low in carbohydrates uh, and so they're going to be uh, extremely good uh, for your uh, nutrition. Uh, so, uh, so that's what I do and, and I use those two things to replace the, uh, the sweetness. And as I said, I don't snack. I don't even buy snacks. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't eat. I don't typically uh, eat out very much. Um, I'm not averse to eating out, and if I do eat out, it will be in a restaurant. Uh, it will still be without uh, the carbohydrate foods like potatoes and uh, and rice and so on. Okay, so if you're at an Indian restaurant, get the veg and curry but ask them to leave the potatoes out or um, you know there, there's I mean in Indian cuisine is essentially uh, a vegetarian based cuisine anyway so it shouldn't be too difficult to to eat uh, reasonably uh, okay so uh, drinks uh, during the day uh, I've never taken sugar in my um, tea or coffee anyway um, so that cutting that out hasn't been a problem. If you do uh, sw switch to sweeteners, uh, I I drink uh, peppermint tea because I like the taste of it. Uh, I do have uh, ordinary PG tips in the house. My problem with that <coughs> is that I drink quite a lot of tea. I might have uh, six cups in a day, for example, and if I'm using milk, that's quite a lot of calories. Uh, that you have to add into uh, add into your calculation. So for me, it was just simplest to use um, uh, herbal tea like peppermint tea. Uh, you might prefer fruit teas, uh, just w w whatever you like. Uh, avoid you having to bother with the milk and the uh, sort of keeping track of what those calories are. And I also drink water. Uh, I drink a couple of liters of water. Well, maybe a liter of water uh, a day. And then uh, lots of uh, uh, lots of tea, peppermint tea. So that's that's what I've done about uh, my diet. Uh, you might you might look at that and think, well, that's pretty extreme. Um, and I I guess it is, but I think that I think that that's the way forwards uh, for people. You don't necessarily have to be vegetarian. Um, my strongest advice would be to be vegetarian. Uh, I think the uh, the way that big business messes about with the food chain is absolutely criminal, and and truly should be criminalised. Um, but if if you're one of those people who feels that they just can't do that, well then you know don't. But be aware of how many calories you are taking in, um, and you know don't. Don't let those calories uh, get too high, and don't let you don't let yourself fool yourself. Don't you know? Don't say um, calculate the calories for uh, 150 grams of meat, and then just uh, disregard how much meat you're putting into your diet. Uh, you know, be clear about what your calorific intake is. As I say, don't get bogged down about counting calories, but at the beginning, take note, be clear about uh, what you're taking in and then try to stick roughly to that. Uh, and again, my strongest advice would be get rid of those carbs. You know, stop, stop eating pies, pastries, 
cakes, bread, potatoes, rice, pasta, cut them out. You don't need them. You know, you, you, you can get everything from somewhere else. So, so don't, get, don't get into them. Just don't buy them. Don't bother with them. Okay, so that's what I've got to say about diet. Don't be dieting. Change, fundamentally change what you're eating so that you feel satisfied. You satisfy those um, sweet tooth cravings. Control your portions. Get a grip on the calorific intake. You will lose weight and it will be sustainable. I hope that's been of some interest and uh, I look forward to seeing, seeing you in the next video. Uh, the next video will probably come up pretty close to this one. Um, I want to get this series out of the way because I have a mountain of things stacking up. Um, but drop me a line, let me know how you're getting on, let me know uh, if this is any use to anybody, uh, if you're starting your journey or you're through your journey or you've had your weight loss journey, how did it go, was it sustainable? Uh, love to hear from you. Bye for now.